there's a car that I want to show you that's deeply weird and deeply unusual and extremely uncommon. And it's this thing right here. It's a 1924 Micron cycle car. Welcome to Jason Drive! Cycle cars are a category of cars that don't really exist anymore. There was not a lot good about cycle cars, other than they were cheap, and they worked, and they were available. But they were also kind of fun. Even for cycle cars, though, there were all kinds of drawbacks. They were usually limited to the number of people they could carry. They were not safe. I think the best analogy to what cycle cars were is if you remember back in the early 2000s, you remember netbooks? Netbooks were like these really cheap laptops that were dirt cheap, but they did all the basic stuff you need. You could get on the internet Internet, you could watch YouTube videos, you could do whatever. Nobody actually wanted a netbook specifically. You wanted a real laptop. That's basically what cycle cars were way back in the day. Around 19, the early 1920s, enough cheap cars were coming to market that were still real cars, and they kind of killed off cycle cars. Cars like the Model T, cars like the Austin 7, a little more in Europe. These things were actually usable, viable, full-size cars that were about as cheap as the cycle cars were, and they all kind of died off. That's part of what makes this particular one so strange. Why was this cycle car still around in 1924, a time when the Model T was around? So one thing you may notice about it is that it is very much a one-seat car. They're not even trying to make it multiple-seater. Um, and a lot of cycle cars of this era, because they knew that was going to be these people's only car, uh, they did all they could to stagger seats or do whatever they could to cram more than one seat in a really small body. They're not bothering with any of that here. You actually have a fair amount of room. The upholstery is actually a lot better than most of these cycle cars would have had. It's a nice seat. This is, I believe, redone, but it's done accurately to how this was originally, and it's got real leather, and it's padded, and it's comfortable, and there's leather on the sides. The quality of the wood used is nice. The interior of this thing is actually kind of nice. It's almost, I don't know if I'd say luxury, but it's getting close. This was being marketed to people who already had a large, nice touring car car, but didn't want to use it every day for commuting. So the thinking for the Micron was, you have your nice car to use on the weekends, your day-to-day -day commuting is done with this one-seater little car that's nimble, can get through traffic, and was cheap to use and maintain. So in some ways, this was kind of the start of the two-car uh, household. So the big thing about cycle cars in general was that they were built to be cheap, and they usually used a lot of motorcycle style components. They didn't do a lot of uh, radical engineering because it just didn't make any sense. A lot of simple chain drives, things that were dirt simple and known to work, which is why everything about this is so strange, because none of this is really all that simple, and it's all kind of radical and strange. For one thing, it's front wheel drive in an era where front wheel drive was not common at all. And not only is it front wheel drive, the engine and transmission unit are all mounted here on this pivot. And when you steer the car, the whole engine and transmission and everything move as a unit. This is a deeply, weirdly strange, strange way to go about steering. One of the things I always realize when I drive something really archaic like this is just what candy asses all of us in modernity are. So I'm gonna get in and just kind of walk you through the driving controls of this thing. So you open this hilariously tiny little door here and you just kind of cram your leg through and sit down. But once you're in here, it actually is pretty comfortable. Everything's weird. Okay, so you've got your steering wheel here and that works like a steering wheel. Of course, it's heavy because you're moving the entire drivetrain. There's a knob here that you rotate to basically turn on or off the fuel flow to the engine. The throttle is both, it's interconnected. There's a hand version of the throttle right here, and then there's a foot pedal. Um, neither of them have a very good action. They're both these clumsy old school cables. It, and then there's a big brake in the center, which seems to only be active on the rear wheels. There's something like a clutch next to that. The gear lever is this strange thing in the middle here, and it, if you pull it back, it seems to be the, the neutral setting, or I think there's a neutral setting in the middle. And then there's two slots on either side for the two gears. They also say it has a reverse, but I've yet to figure out exactly 
where reverse is on this thing. And then there's another pedal in the middle between the throttle and the brake that's actually the kill switch because uh, there's no electrical system conventionally. There's a magneto and there's no battery or, or generator in this thing. So to kill it, you actually have to push down on this kill switch, which I believe separates some contact from the magneto and then the engine stops. And of course, all the pedals are strangely close together and at all kinds of weird angles. So. Um, it seems very difficult to drive, so I'm not confident at all that this is gonna go well when I take this for a few laps out there. I'm gonna put on more appropriate eyewear for this manner of vehicle. These. All right, let's see if this works. Clutch in, gear. Go, 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 yeah! Oh God, this is terrifying! God! This is not a relaxing drive. This sensation of steering is among the worst I've ever driven. It's got like, you're not actually in danger of tipping, but the sensation you get through the wheel sure as hell feels like it. Who was buying this thing? Let's open her up a little. I don't even want to shift to the next gear. Honestly, it's only got two. What am I gonna do? Take it on highway speed? I don't even know what this thing would have done. Let's try a tighter turn. <laughs> Crap! This doesn't feel good. Yeah! Let's try to, let's see if you can relax and drive this thing. The seat is pretty good though, I gotta admit. I mean, you're not, it's not uncomfortable, other than the fact, it's like being comfortable inside a, a small textile mill that's just wrapped around you. Alright, gonna kill it. You hit this. Did it? Worked. Ah, I have to say, there's a lot of things I actually respect about this car. This thing is 97 years old and it's still going. It says something about this simple, rugged design of the thing. It's also terrible to drive. It's the steering is so heavy and strange. The turning circle's not great. And the whole thing, as I move this wheel, look, you can see it transfers motion throughout this whole body. It's a strange little vehicle. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm really happy it exists and I'm kind of thrilled I got to drive it. So uh, yeah, if you're in the market, absolutely consider a Micron.